Hello and welcome to Front Runner Motorsport. And I know it's been a week since I've uploaded anything, but I have been on holiday and I didn't have anything prepared in time. So, you know, I've missed out on a lot too. Including the Spa Grand Prix, which actually, as it turned out, I wasn't missing much. Nothing really happened. It was a bit of a debacle and that's what we are going to discuss today. So, remember to subscribe and let's begin. So I go away for a few days and I don't get back till very very late Sunday night. It's now the early hours of Wednesday morning and I'm finally getting around to making a video about something that happened f a few days ago so you've probably already seen plenty of videos and opinions and whatever else on the Belgium Grand Prix. I think it was the only decision they could have made. That being said, it wasn't good. I went to a motor museum instead, and I had a great time. I even got a model of Rene Rast's 2018 DTM winning Audi, which I am very proud of. But when I got back on Sunday, I did watch, or attempt to watch, the... I don't want to call it a race, because it wasn't really a race, but I did watch the Spa Grand Prix. I first watched the highlights of qualifying, which were far superior. I missed an absolute banger of a qualifying session, with George Russell qualifying in second place, beating Lewis Hamilton. It's... I can't believe I missed that. It sucks. It's a huge moment for Williams, who have obviously been pretty terrible over the last three or four years. And now they've had two double points finishes in a row, although this one a bit fortunate. But can you imagine if George Russell had managed to get on pole position? He'd have won the Belgium Grand Prix. Considering where Williams have been, and it has been nine years since they've won a race, that would be amazing. As it was, Max Verstappen took the win because he qualified on pole. I don't think this will be his proudest victory, but it does kind of end that run of results where Red Bull are kind of getting pounded by Mercedes, literally. It gets them back on track, I guess, and it'll be interesting to see at Zandvoort with Max Verstappen's home race, what kind of position they're in. Hopefully Sergio Perez can back him up because he's had not had a great run of luck recently. So the actual race, for what it was, was just a few safety car laps. Nothing happening, no overtaking, and the race finishing in qualifying order because the weather was too bad to go ahead. This is always a shame, and you see it a lot more in NASCAR where the slightest drizzle and they have to call the whole race off for another day because they can't dare go out onto the track, which actually in NASCAR is probably sensible. I think some kind of alternative is needed. So I've come up with the idea of a heavy weather alternative vehicle. Something simple, like a, you just do a one litre electric car, that way it's sustainable as well. You just bring it round with them on the Grand Prix circuits to every track and if the weather's too bad to race a Formula 1 car in, you can just jump in these things and just bash them about for a few laps. Doesn't have to count towards the World Championship. That wouldn't make sense. But just to give us something, because what we got on Sunday was abysmal, but I don't think they could have done anything else. It was too dangerous to race in, given what we've seen at Spa in recent years, and in the W Series qualifying as well, we had a massive crash with about six cars piling up in a Rouge, uh, Beitzkevissa and I think it was Alia Algren ended up in hospital, didn't take part in the W Series race this weekend. And obviously you had Lando Norris as well, crashing and qualifying at quite a high speed. It's probably best not to race in those conditions. 
So this was the only option. It doesn't look very good though on TV. And if you're a paying customer, I should imagine you were pissed. So, as I said, I think the only alternative is to have a small vehicle. Let them just bash into each other for five or six laps. That way, everyone gets something out of it. It doesn't affect the World Championship. Like, if Max Verstappen wins the World Championship by half a point, we can look back at this race and say, that probably helped. And I don't think Max Verstappen wants to win the championship that way. And it's pretty close between Lewis and Max now. There's only a couple of points in it. I think like seven between Mercedes and Red Bull and the constructors. Ferrari got another double points finish, although I think they're a bit lower down the order. So it probably helped them because they are going to be running an upgraded engine apparently after Monza. So they were worried about Spa and Monza being the tracks they were going to struggle at. So one of them out of the way without too much damage. That's a really good result for them. Daniel Ricciardo probably got his best result of the season so far, although I can't really remember and I can't be bothered to check. And some of the big names like Lando Norris, Valtteri Bottas and Sergio Perez were outside of the points. But given that those half points, that's probably not a huge loss. It hasn't really affected the championship too much. It's just kind of disappointing from... You had this long summer break, which we always get, and it's fine, that's normal, perfectly reasonable. But this was like the big comeback race, not only that, it's Spa. I've said before, Spa is my favourite track. I'm disappointed we're not getting a proper Spa Grand Prix this year. And I hope 2021 we have an absolute classic at Spa, that's not weather affected. We look forward anyway, we've got Zanfort next week. And, you know, we've been looking forward to Zanfort for the last two years. Obviously, it got cancelled last year. New track. Going to be very, very different. A different challenge for the drivers. It'll be interesting to see how that affects the championship and who's going to win, who's going to get on pole. Just what a great weekend it's going to be. I'm really looking forward to the Dutch Grand Prix. Um, there's nothing much more to say about it. And you've probably already watched millions of videos. But, hey, remember to subscribe. We're getting very close to 500 now. I think we only 29 off. I am preparing some special videos once we hit 500, and I'm very, very excited about them. Uh, like, comment, and share the video and whatever. Thank you for watching, thank you for waiting, and have a good one.